Do you want to compete with China by doing things that will do a lot of harm to your society? Even if the robots do exactly what the people who built the robots want them to do, the risk is that it's going to make big countries invade small countries more. And these machines will be smarter at warfare as well. So. The godfather of AI reveals the worst case scenario by 2027, and it's absolutely chilling. So let's get right into it. Shout out to the diary of the CEO for posting this. This is absolutely wild stuff. Here we go. Is there anything you're doing to protect yourself from cyber attacks at all? Yes. It's one of the few places where I changed what I do radically because I'm scared of cyber attacks. Canadian banks are extremely safe. In 2008, no Canadian banks came anywhere near going bust. Mm -hmm. So they're very safe banks because they're well regulated, fairly well regulated. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I think a cyber attack might be able to bring down a bank. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have all my savings are in shares in banks, held by banks, so if the bank gets attacked and it holds your shares, they're still your shares. And so I think you'd be okay unless the attacker sells the shares because the bank can sell the shares. If the attacker sells your shares, I think you're screwed. I don't know. I mean, maybe the bank would have to try and reimburse you, but the bank's bust by now, right? So, mm -hmm. so I'm worried about a Canadian bank being taken down by a cyber attack and the attacker selling selling shares that it holds. So I spread my money, my children's money between three banks in the belief that if a cyber attack takes down one Canadian bank, the other Canadian banks will very quickly get very careful. And do you have a phone that's not connected to the internet? Do you have any, like, you know, I'm thinking about storing data and stuff like that. Do you think it's wise to consider having cold storage? I have a little disk drive and I back up my laptop on this hard drive. Mm -hmm. So I actually have everything on my laptop on a hard drive. At least, you know, if the whole thing- Yeah, that's scary. Like, what are you gonna do if a bank gets completely robbed? Man, I just thought about it. Yeah, uh, I have one bank account. I need to buy gold or something. Get cash, hide it in your house. I don't know. When it went down, I had the sense I still got it on my laptop and I still got my information. Okay. Then the next thing is, using AIs to create nasty viruses. Okay. And the problem with that is that requ just requires one crazy guy with a grudge. One guy who knows a little bit of molecular biology, knows a lot about AI, and just wants to destroy the world. You can now create new viruses relatively cheaply using AI. And you don't have to be a very skilled molecular biologist to do it. And that's very scary. So you could have a small cult, for example. A small cult might be able to raise a few million dollars. For a few million dollars, they might be able to design a whole bunch of viruses. Well, I'm thinking about some of our foreign adversaries doing government-funded programs. I mean, there was lots of talk around COVID and the Wuhan laboratory and what they were doing in gain-of-function research. But mm. I'm wondering if in you know, a China or a Russia or an Iran or something, the government could fund a program for a small group of scientists to make a virus that they could, you know? I think they could, yes. Now, they'd be worried about retaliation. They'd be worried about other governments doing the same to them. Hopefully that would help keep it under control. They might also be worried about the virus spreading to their country. Okay. Just like COVID <laughs> makes you wonder, like, what are the possibilities? If you're always testing these those things, they could easily get out any time. So that's scary. And also, it's like, yeah, the reason why you don't nuke people because you don't want people nuking you back. It's just dangerous. Then there's um, corrupting elections. Okay. So if you wanted to use AI to corrupt elections, a very effective thing is to be able to do targeted political advertisements where you know a lot about the person. So... Anybody who wanted to use AI for corrupting elections would try and get as much data as they could about everybody in the electorate. With that in mind, it's a bit worrying what Musk is doing at present in the States, going in and insisting on getting access to all these things that were very carefully siloed. The claim is it's to make things more efficient, but it's exactly what you would want if you intended to corrupt the next election. How do you mean? Could you get all this data on the You population? get all this data on people. Yeah. You know how much they make, where they live. You know everything about them. Once you know that, it's very easy to manipulate them. Because you can make an AI that... You can send messages um, that they'll find very convincing, telling them not to vote, for example. So I have no, no 
reason other than common sense to think this, but I wouldn't be surprised if part of the motivation of getting all this data from American government sources is to corrupt elections. Another part might be that it's very nice training data for a big model. What if like anyone could just do that? A lot of information, people vote based off of information. And what if that information was corrupted? What if that information was completely sabotaged by whatever country possible to spread lies, to spread whatever they want? Oh man. The world we get into is so tricky and scary. Or is it because just we don't know anything about it? Just like we didn't know anything about computers 30 years ago. And it seemed scary at the time. But what if it just becomes so normal and we don't even think about it? But that's that's the big thing that we like to talk about now is AI. But he would have to be taking that data from the government and feeding it into his... Yes. And what they've done is turned off lots of the security controls, got rid of the some of the organization to protect against that. Really? Um, so that's corrupting elections. Okay. Then there's creating these two echo chambers by organizations like YouTube and Facebook showing people things that will make them indignant. People love to be indignant. Indignant as in angry? Or what does indignant mean? feeling I'm sort of angry, but feeling righteous. Okay. So for example, if you were to show me something that said, Trump did this crazy thing, here's a video of Trump doing this completely crazy thing, I would immediately click on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so putting us in echo chambers and dividing us. Yes, and that's, um, now that's already the here. policy that YouTube and Facebook and others use for deciding what to show you next is causing that. If they had a policy of showing you balanced things, they wouldn't get so many clicks and they wouldn't be able to sell so many advertisements. That and so it's basically the profit motive is saying... Yeah, everything is based off of money and no one cares about anything else. And their goal is to get you to stay on YouTube as long as possible. And how do they do that? Is finding the best video possible for you to watch and get you to stay on it as long as possible. So that's the scary thing. Show them whatever will make them click. And what will make them click is things that are more and more extreme. And that confirm my existing bias. And that confirm my existing bias. So you're getting your biases confirmed all the time. Further and further For, and further yeah, and further, yeah. which means you're, you're driving which away Which is now there's in the States, there's two communities that don't hardly talk to each other. I'm not mm -hmm. sure people realize that this is actually happening every time they open an app. But if you go on a TikTok or a YouTube or, or one of these big social networks, the algorithm, as you, you said, is designed to show you more of the things that you had interest in last time. So if you just play that out over 10 years, it's going to drive you further and further and further into whatever ideology or belief you have and further away from nuance wow. and common sense and um, parity, which yeah. is a pretty remarkable thing. That I, I, like People don't know it's happening. They just open their phones and experience something and mm -hmm. think this is the news or the experience everyone else is having. Right. So... Basically, if you have a newspaper and everybody gets the same newspaper, yeah. you get to see all sorts of things you weren't looking for. And you get a sense that if it's in the newspaper, it's an important thing or significant thing. But if you have your own news feed, my news feed on my iPhone, three quarters of the stories are about AI. <laughs> and I find it very hard to know if the whole world's talking about AI all the time or if it's just my news feed. <laughs> True. Okay, so driving me into my echo chambers, um, which is going to continue to divide us further and further. I'm actually noticing that the algorithms are becoming even more, what's the word, tailored. And people might go, oh, that's great. But what it means is they're becoming even more personalized, which is, is means that my reality is becoming even further from your yeah. reality. Yeah, it's crazy. We don't have a shared reality anymore. I share reality yeah. with other people who watch the BBC and other... BBC News and other people who read The Guardian and other people who read The New York Times. I have almost no shared reality with people who watch Fox News. Uh -huh. It's pretty, it's pretty, um, I, I, it's worrisome. Yeah. Behind all this is the idea that these companies just want to make profit and yep. they'll do whatever it takes to make more profit. Because they have to. They're legally obliged to do that. So we almost can't blame the company, can we? If they're, if well, that's... Capitalism has done very well for us. It's produced lots of goodies. Yeah. But you need to have it very well regulated. 
So what you really want is to have rules so that when some company is trying to make as much profit as possible, in order to make that profit, they have to do things that are good for people in general, not things that are bad for people in general. Like all of the red colors and harmful substances that they put into our food and snacks because it's cheaper. In other countries, these substances are illegal, but they do it because they make the most money. And sometimes there needs to be regulations because we want people to be healthy. We want people to not die and get diseases and get cancer because of all the crazy stuff that's going into our bodies. I mean, at the end of the day, people still choose, but why not regulate some of that? I get to have some regulation. You can still have regulation in a capitalistic society. There's always regulation. Once you get to a situation where in order to make more profit, the company starts doing things that are very bad for society, like showing you things that are more and more extreme, that's what regulations are for. So you need regulations with capitalism. Now, companies will always say regulations get in the way, make us less efficient, and that's true. The whole point of regulations is to stop them doing things to make profit that hurt society. And we need strong regulation. Who's going to decide whether it hurts society or not? Because, you know... That's the job of politicians. Unfortunately, if the politicians are owned by the companies, that's not so good. And also the politicians might not understand the technology. We've, you've probably seen the Senate hearings where they wheel out, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and these big tech CEOs. And it is quite embarrassing because they're asking the wrong questions. Well, I've seen the video of the US Education Secretary talking about how they're going to get AI in the classrooms, except she thought it was called A1. She's actually there saying we're going to have all the kids interacting with A1. There's a school system that's going to start um, making sure that first graders or even pre-Ks have A1 teaching, you know, every year starting, you know, that far down in the grades. And that's just a, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> that's insane how some, so many people can be oblivious or ignorant to so many things happening within culture, but they're the ones who are in charge of this. Those are the ones who are putting these laws into effect, but they have no idea what exactly it is. Lord help us. And these are, well, these are the people that... These are the people in charge. Ultimately, the tech companies are in charge because they were well, smart. The tech companies in the States now, at least a few weeks ago when I was there, they were running an advertisement about how it was very important not to regulate AI because it would hurt us in the competition with China. Yeah. And that's a, that's a plausible argument, no? Yes, it will. But you have to decide. Do you want to compete with China by doing things that will do a lot of harm to your society? Hmm. And you probably don't. I guess they would say that it's not just China, it's Denmark and Australia and Canada and the yeah, they're UK. Not so, they're not so worried about. And Germany. But if they kneecap themselves with regulation, if they slow themselves down, then the founders, the entrepreneurs, the investors are going to go I invest. think calling it kneecapping is sort of yeah. taking a particular point of view. It's take, taking the point of view that regulations are sort of very harmful. What you need to do is just constrain the big companies so that in order to make profit, they have to do things that are socially useful. Like Google Search is a great example. That didn't need regulation because it just made information available to people. It was great. But then if you take YouTube, where it starts showing you adverts and showing you more and more extreme things, that needs regulation. But we don't have the people to regulate it, as we've identified. I think people know pretty well um, that particular problem of showing you more and more extreme things. That's a well-known problem that the politicians understand. They just um, need to get on and regulate it. So that was the, the next point, which was that the algorithms are going to drive us further into our echo chambers. Right. What's next? Lethal autonomous weapons. Lethal autonomous weapons. That means things that can kill you and make their own decision about whether to kill you. Oh, wow. Which is the great dream, I guess, of the military industrial complex, of being able to create yes. such weapons. So the worst thing about them is... Big, powerful countries always have the ab ability to invade smaller, poorer countries. They're just more powerful. Mm -hmm. But if you do that using actual soldiers, you get bodies coming back in bags and the relatives of the soldiers who were killed don't like it. So you get something like Vietnam. Mm -hmm. In the end, there's a lot of protests at home. If instead of bodies coming back in bags, it was dead robots, there'd be much less protest 
And the military industrial complex would like it much more because robots are expensive. And mm. suppose you had something that could get killed and was expensive to replace. That would be just great. Big countries can invade small countries much more easily because they don't have their soldiers being killed. Well, I said this earlier because the military industrial complex is a massive, massive industry and they thrive on war. And the more war, the more money they make because they have to build all of these things. There's the more of a supply and a, a demand. That's scary for sure. That's what makes you think about COVID, like all the vaccines. It was good for their business that everyone got COVID because everyone had to get a vaccine, man. And the risk here is that these robots will malfunction or they'll just be more no no that's even if the robots do exactly what the people who built the robots want them to do the risk is that it's going to make big countries invade small countries more often more often because they can yeah and it's not a nice thing to do so it brings down the friction of war it brings down the cost of doing an invasion mm. be and these machines will be smarter at warfare as well so they'll be well even when the machines aren't smarter so the lethal autonomous weapons they can make them now and they, I think all the big defense departments are busy making them. Even if they're not smarter than people, they're still very nasty, scary things. Because I'm thinking that, you know, they could show just a picture, go get this guy. Yeah. And go take out anyone he's been texting. And this little wasp. So two days ago, I was visiting a friend of mine in Sussex who had a drone that cost less than £200. And the drone went up. It took a good look at me. And then it could follow me through the woods. Mm -hmm. And it followed, it was very spooky having this drone. It was about two meters behind me. It was looking at me. And if I moved over there, it moved over there. It could just track me huh. mm -hmm. for 200 pounds. But it was already quite spooky. Yeah. And I imagine there's, as you say, a race going on as we speak to who yeah. can build the most complex autonomous, autonomous weapons. There is a, a risk. I often hear that some of these things will combine and the cyber attack will release weapons. Sure. Um, you can you can get combinatorially many risks by combining these other risks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for example, you could get a super intelligent AI that decides to get rid of people. And the obvious way to do that is just to make one of these nasty viruses. If you made a virus that was very contagious, very lethal and very slow, everybody would have it before they realized what was happening. I mean, I think if a super intelligence wanted to get rid of us, it would probably go for something biological like that that wouldn't affect it. Do you but how could AI create a biological virus? Not unless it has mechanics, you know, like a physical thing, right? Or am I just super ignorant on this topic? But this is the world we live in and we need to trust in God during it all because the world is crazy, guys. The world is wild. The world is crazy, but... God is good and he is in control and we can trust in him. So guys, I encourage you to keep on trusting in Jesus when the world seems to be going crazy, when the future is unknown and we don't know how things are going to pan out. But we do know one thing, God is faithful and he is just and, and he's going to be there with you through it all. So go to him. He loves you so much. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And always remember, Jesus loves you.